Choosing a weapon in Rainbow Six Siege can be a daunting task. Every gun has their own recoil patterns, attachments, and damage outputs that can be overwhelming for new players to understand. So in today's video, I shot every single assault rifle in the shooting range, and I'll be using the data I collected to rank all of them from worst to best. Where will your favorite assault rifle show up? Well, make sure you watch the video all the way through because some of the placements will surprise you. Before I can go into where I put all the guns, I must first explain my testing methodology. When testing guns recoil, I will exclusively use suppressor to provide a more accurate representation of the gun's recoil. I want the recoil in the video to be as accurate to your setup as possible without other attachments affecting it. However, I will be taking the attachments available on every firearm into my ranking. If a gun is more viable with extended barrel, I will take the extended barrel into account. And if a gun doesn't have any magnification sights, they will get docked points for not having them. Outside of that, testing will just come down to stats like fire rate, damage per shot, and damage per second, which the damage per second I calculated myself. Anyways, I think that's enough rambling. Let's go ahead and get into the video. Starting out with the worst assault rifle in Siege, we have the MK-17, or as most of you know it, the SCAR-H. At the time of recording, this gun is only available on Blackbeard, and it has no redeeming qualities. It has an extremely low fire rate of 585, its damage is only 40, and it has an extremely low capacity of 20 bullets per mag. This gun is quite literally the worst DPS weapon I will talk about this entire video, and it doesn't have anything else to make up for it. There is a reason why everyone hates this gun, and it definitely deserves to be the worst gun in this video, by a long shot. Now in the 23rd spot, things don't get much better. The POF9 has a lot of horizontal and vertical recoil, as you can see. Now one would think that because of that recoil, Ubisoft would give the gun some decent stats. Well, you'd be wrong. The POF9 has a horrible damage of 35 and an average fire rate of 740, making it have the second worst DPS out of all the assault rifles. The only good thing about this gun is the fact that it has a 50 round capacity, but there is another gun in this video that is much better at filling that role. So it really isn't enough to move it up the ranks. As for the 22nd spot, we have a fan favorite, that being Jaeger's 416C. People who still like this gun are just overcome with nostalgia because everything about it sucks. The 416 has moderate recoil that could be described as jumpy if you look at the spread. And then on top of this, its stats aren't great. It has the same fire rate as the POF9 740 and a slightly higher damage of 38. And unlike the POF9, it has a low magazine size of 25. There really isn't anything good about this gun and it definitely doesn't live up to the hype. Moving on to the 21st spot, we have the AK-74. This is when we finally start entering the passable weapons. The AK-74 recoil wise has a decent amount of horizontal, but with its low fire rate of 650, this recoil is barely noticeable. Now to make up for the pretty low fire rate, the AK-74 has an above average damage of 44. Now it may not have a high DPS, but its big mag size allows it to be a pretty good support weapon. But realistically, compared to other ARs, it can't really compete. Next up in the 20th spot, the F2 surprisingly finds itself here. If you told me a couple of seasons ago that the F2 would have fallen off this hard, I would have laughed in your face. But with the recent nerfs to its recoil, I just can't bring myself to put it any higher. Just look at this ridiculous recoil spread. Now, I won't lie, the F2 has the best DPS out of all the ARs in the game right now. It has a decent damage of 37, but with a fire rate of 980. But does that really matter if you can't reliably put shots down range? I don't think so. If you run this gun, you'll find yourself losing a lot of gunfights simply due to its high recoil. After the F2 in the 19th spot, we have the ARX in the 20th spot. The ARX is actually a pretty good rifle. It has the lowest recoil out of all the guns in this list so far. Now this is in part due to its slightly below average fire rate, but its extremely high damage of 47 makes up for that. This makes it have an above average DPS of 548 by my calculations, which isn't anything to sleep on by any means. I think the biggest thing holding it back from being higher though, is the fact that it has an extremely low mag size of 20. If it could hold more, it could definitely move up a few spots for me. Moving past the ARX, we have the Type 89 in the 18th spot. On paper, the Type 89 is amazing. It has a roughly average damage of 40 and a high fire rate of 850, making its DPS a high 567. But with these great stats on paper, in practice, the Type 89 just sucks. And this is due to it having surprisingly high horizontal recoil. Without the compensator, good luck controlling this thing, because you'll need it. Just look at this horrendous recoil spread. After the Type 89, we have the Spear 308 at the 17th spot. This gun is just the definition of average. The Spear has an average fire rate of 700, and it only has a slightly above average damage of 42. The only thing holding it back 
is it's pretty jumpy recoil, but outside of that, it's just average. Now in the 16th spot, we have the AR-33. This is another average weapon at best. Its recoil is pretty easy to control. It has a slight bit of jumpiness in its horizontal recoil, but a compensator will easily deal with that. As for its stats, the AR-33 has an average damage of 41 and an average fire rate of 749, making its DPS a measly 511. On top of this, it only has 25 bullets in a magazine. So realistically, the AR-33 doesn't belong anywhere higher than this because it's just the definition of average. Moving past the AR-33, we have the F-90 in the 15th spot. The F-90 has an extremely easy to control recoil pattern probably the best in this list by far. However, its other aspects are below average at best. It has a damage of 38 and its fire rate is 780. This means the gun's overall DPS is 494, which having a DPS under 500 is pretty bad for an assault rifle. Despite this, I think its ability to be an absolute laser allows it to make it up to this spot. Now in the 14th spot, we have Wamayan IQ's AUG A2. This thing is an extremely average weapon all around. It has pretty easy to control recoil, as you can see by the spread. It has 42 damage, a 720 fire rate, and a DPS of 504. Literally, everything here is average. So much so that I don't really have much to say about it. It will get the job done if you run it, and that's about it. Moving in at the 13th spot, we have another fan favorite, Ashes R4C. A couple of years ago, her gun could have been much higher than this. But with all the nerfs to the gun's recoil and it having its magnification sights removed, it has hurt the gun a lot. If you just look at the shooting range footage I'm playing on screen, you can tell that the recoil has gotten a lot more difficult. As for its stats, they are actually pretty good. It has an average damage of 39 and a fire rate of 860, which results in it having a high DPS of 559. This means that if you can hit your shots, you will be rewarded. But hitting those shots with no good sight option and high recoil can be a little difficult, which is why I didn't put it higher than 14. After Ash's R4C, we have Buck C8 in the 12th spot. This is an extremely strong assault rifle. It deals 40 damage, which isn't crazy, but combined with the 837 fire rate on this weapon, it makes it absolutely shred. To get an idea, its DPS is 558. This is within the top 10 DPSs out of all the assault rifles. Now, why isn't the C8 higher then? Well, this is because of the extremely jumpy vertical recoil on this rifle. If you practice, you can easily get the hang of it, but that requires skill. And we are ranking these guns strictly off stats, so I can't really put the C8 any higher. Next up in the 11th spot, we have the most picked gun on the attacking side right now, the G36C. This gun is popular for it being extremely consistent. It has low recoil and a 1.5 allowing you to easily hit shots at range, especially with a good barrel. However, its downside is actually its DPS. It only has a damage of 38 and a fire rate of 780, meaning that its DPS is criminally average. Realistically, if the G3 lost its 1.5 or had higher recoil, it would immediately be dead on arrival. But due to it being so easy to use, I had to put it relatively high up on this list. Now that we arrive at the 10th spot, we are finally starting to get close to the heavy hitters. This spot is filled by the beloved M762 available on Sophia. And this weapon is extremely solid. It has a high damage of 45, an average fire rate of 730, and a good capacity of 30 rounds per mag. And its moderate recoil won't cause you to lose any gunfights. Its horizontal recoil can get a little jumpy at times, but within medium and close ranges, you should be fine. It only begins to suffer when taking long range engagements, but these are so few and far between in Siege that it won't really matter in the long run. Overall, this is a really solid pick on the attacking side, and you can't really go wrong with it. Coming up in the number nine spot, we have Thermite's 556. This is one of the most consistent ARs in this game. It has extremely easy to control recoil, especially with attachments, which will ensure that you will hit your target no matter what range you're fighting them at. On top of that, its stats are no joke. It has a damage of 47, a fire rate of 690, and a capacity of 30. This allows his AR to hit like an absolute truck. This is especially noticeable against operators like Doc and Rook, where he can still consistently three-shot them with ease. Overall, whether you are picking the gun on Thermite or Osa, you can't really go wrong with it. It has a good damage output and low recoil. Moving past the 5.56, we have the AK-12 in the 8th spot. A while ago, the AK-12 was undoubtedly the best AR in the game, but with some recent nerfs to the weapon, I can't justify putting it higher than where I've placed it. At the time of recording, the AK-12 has a lot of upper right recoil, especially compared to the previous weapons I've been talking about, like the 5.56. I'm sure you can tell just based off the shooting range gameplay. Now, if you just look at this, you may think the AK-12 deserves to be lower, but its stats are able to make up for this recoil drastically. The AK-12 deals 40 damage and it has a high fire rate of 850, making its DPS the fourth highest in the game without extended barrel. And it's not like the recoil is awful either. If you run a good barrel and you give it a little practice, you can get used to it. 
In the seventh spot, we have the V308, which is very different from other guns in this list. The biggest difference being its huge magazine of 50 bullets per mag. This allows you to experience the LMG meta in the modern day, and its sizable fire rate of 700 makes it possible to take full advantage. Now, one would think that its damage must be bad if every other stat is good. Well, its damage is really solid too, with it dealing 44 damage. So there really isn't a downside to this gun at all. The only reason it isn't higher is because the guns following it up are just so good. Now in the sixth spot, we have the Para 308. Now this gun has just recently started to become popular. And if you just look at the stats, this may be confusing to you, but if you just hear me out, it'll start to make sense. This gun has recoil that is extremely easy to control, especially with its low fire rate of 650, you can get away with controlling it no matter the range. Now to make up for the fire rate though, the gun hits like an absolute truck with it dealing a whopping 47 damage a shot. Now, you may be wondering, well, this just sounds like the 556, but with a worse fire rate. And well, you would be right. But the reason it has become so popular and the reason why I put it higher on this list is because of the extended barrel available. After the damage buff from the extended barrel, this bad boy is left with a whopping 52 damage, allowing it to two shot three speed defenders. Now, I haven't taken this into account with other guns, but I think it would be unfair to not take that into account with this one. In reality, if you're actually using this gun in game, since the gun's recoil is so low, everyone runs the extended barrel anyway. So it would be kind of misleading for me to not at least consider the extended barrel in my ranking. But the extended barrel is on a lot of the best guns in this game right now, and it helps a lot of them to make it to this point in the list. Unlike the Para, the C7E has great stats without the extended barrel, causing it to land right here in the top five. Now, if you just look at the recoil of this gun, it really is painted in a bad light. The vertical kick on this thing is strong and it still has horizontal recoil on top of that, but its stats are able to make up for it. The C7E deals an above average damage of 42 and it has the fourth best fire rate out of all the ARs with it having a whopping 800 fire rate. This makes it have one of the best DPSs out of any of the assault rifles. So this makes the high recoil trade-off worth it in the long run. So if you spend some time learning the recoil of it, you will be rewarded greatly. Now in the fourth spot, we have another gun that has been massively buffed to the extended barrel. That being the 5.52 Commando. This gun, like the Para 308, has extremely low recoil along with a slow fire rate of 690. However, it makes up for that fire rate with its high damage of 47. And now I'm sure you can tell based on the stats that this gun is basically a Para with a slightly faster fire rate. They have the same damage with or without extended barrel, and they both have super easy to control recoil. I just put the 5.52 a little higher because of its higher DPS and fire rate. Now, moving into the third spot, we have the L85. This is the best gun for beginners out there. It has extremely low recoil, one of the lowest on this list, a damage of 47, and a fire rate of 670. This makes its DPS a solid 524. Now, you may be wondering, well, this is a lot lower than other guns that I've put this high on the list. Well, his DPS has nothing to do with why I put him this high. The real reason why I put this gun higher than the previous guns is due to its extreme consistency. You can hit shots easily at basically any range and it doesn't matter how good you are at Siege, you can pick up this weapon and start winning gunfights. Now in the number two spot, we have my personal favorite gun of all time, the M4. This thing is extremely fun to use. It has low recoil, access to a two times, a good damage of 44, and a really high fire rate of 750. Literally every aspect of this gun is perfect and it gets even better when you throw an extended barrel on it. The only thing holding this gun back from being in first is the fact that the next gun on this list is absolutely overpowered. Speaking of first place, a lot of you may be surprised to see the SC3000 in this spot, but I think it wholeheartedly deserves it. It has slightly jumpy recoil, but what it's missing in controllability, it makes up for in sheer damage output. This thing deals a whopping 45 damage with a fire rate of 800 rounds per minute. This instantly makes it have the second best DPS out of all the ARs, right behind the F2. But when you run extended barrel, its damage jumps up to a whopping 50, and it becomes the highest DPS out of any gun on this list by a long shot. And while it may have some jumpy recoil, it's still controllable at close to medium range. And if you can't control it, you don't have to run the extended barrel. It still has the second best DPS in the game without it. But with everything I've talked about here, it's pretty clear why the SA3000 belongs in this spot. You can get away with running it in pretty much every situation. And if you want to be hitting like an absolute truck, you can bring the extended barrel on it and sacrifice some recoil. And that is going to be wrapping up today's video. 
As always, these videos are strictly my opinion, and if you disagree, feel free to leave your takes in the comments down below. If you enjoyed today's video, I make each content just like this twice a week, so go subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter if you don't want to miss the next upload. Also, if you want to see more of me, go over to my Twitch and drop me a follow. I'll be streaming two hours after this video goes up if my internet is actually working, so come and stop by. If you want to watch another video just like this one, I'll be popping up on your screen right now, and I'll see you next time, friends, and peace.